civil society organizations defending human rights are being increasingly targeted by repressive governments across the world. This movie will present some unbelievable stories about oppression, resistance and survival told by human rights defenders who dedicated their lives to help the most marginalized groups of societies in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. A good example for the repression of civil society in Hungary is how harm reduction organizations were treated after the change of government in Hungary in 2010. There was a massive change in the Hungarian drug market after 2010. Classical drugs such as heroin and uh, amphetamine were almost completely replaced by other injectable new stimulant drugs. These drugs uh, are injected more frequently. The demand for clean injecting equipment, needles, went up. Harm reduction services in Hungary were not only threatened by budget cuts and lack of funding, but also because of political attacks. That was very evident in the case of the District 8, where the local mayor, Mati Kocsis, launched a political campaign against the needle exchange operated by an NGO called Bluepoint. He mm, accused the needle exchange program of uh, attracting drug users to the district and being responsible for drug litter and uh, drug-related nuisance in the streets. He also mobilized uh, fake NGOs, kind of gongos, to organize demonstration against the needle exchange program. A József városi embereknek nem kell a kék pont. Felszólítom őket, hagyják abba eddig is borzasztó károkat okozó, embertelen és értelmetlen tevékenységüket. As a result, the local NGO Bluepoint had to close down. Just a few months later, the second largest needle exchange program also uh, closed down. Based on complaints filed by civil society organizations, the Ombudsman for Fundamental Rights declared that these closures violate human rights and called to reopen the program. Just a few days after this uh, statement of the Ombudsman was released, I discovered in one morning that the newspapers are full with uh, accusations against us and against me personally, claiming that uh, I'm an agent of uh, George Soros, I'm serving foreign interest, and uh, they also leaked out some of the correspondence I had with one of the employees of the Ombudsman in a manipulated uh, way, saying that I manipulated the Ombudsman himself. Szomorúan tapasztalom, hogy befészkelte magát a droglobbi az ombudsmani hivatalba, és ezúton felszólítom Székely Lászlót, hogy takarítsa ki onnan. The ombudsman even had to report to a parliamentary committee, and he had to defend himself, and it was completely, completely a nonsense, of course. But it was a very effective strategy to uh, silence us, to discredit us, and to achieve that in the media there was no discussion about the real substance of the statement of the Ombudsman, but about my alleged uh, relationship to the people who work in the Ombudsman's office. The dramatic decrease in distributed needles resulted in uh, an outbreak of hepatitis C among injecting drug users. The prevalence of hepatitis C doubled among injecting drug users in Budapest in just three years. And um, most of these people who were the clients of needle exchange programs that were closed down in Budapest became completely invisible for the treatment system. Soon, not only harm reduction programs were targeted by government propaganda, but also virtually all non-governmental organizations which were critical of the government and served as democratic checks and balances of the ruling power. One of them was the NGO Ökotarsh, which led the consortium that was responsible for distributing the grants of the Norway Civil Funds, which supports democracy and civil society in Hungary. It was a Monday. Um, I got a phone call early in the morning when I was still at home uh, from a police uh, officer stating that she's here in the office, where am I? And I said that I didn't know it, uh, they were coming, they didn't make an appointment. So by the time I got in, I was kind of prepared uh, for the fact that uh, police uh, officers were all around the place, like more than 20 of them. They took away this pile of paper, uh, which we only got back a year later. 
Ukotash and later more than 60 other NGOs were investigated by the police, government audit office and the prosecutor's office, but in the end no charges were filed. Orban's government and his media machine did not stop attacking NGOs, claiming that they are foreign agents serving foreign interests. Nem civilekkel állunk szemben, nem civilek jönnek velünk szemben, hanem fizetett politikai aktivisták, akik külföldi érdekeket próbálnak Magyarországon érvényesíteni. Civil society organizations do participate in policy making. That's one of the roles of civil society, one of the classical roles of civil society, to speak up in public matters uh, that affect people's life. The rhetorics become important because you know, foreign funded wouldn't necessarily mean a bad thing. But uh, with the government's rhetoric that foreign funded uh, also means that not serving Hungarian interests, actually serving someone else's interests, not Hungarians, it becomes a label, it becomes a stigma on these organizations. In September 2015, the refugee crisis reached the borders of Hungary and thousands of asylum seekers appeared at its train stations. The government launched a massive anti-immigration propaganda campaign and accused George Soros and civil society organizations funded by him of orchestrating and organizing the flood of migrants with the purpose of destroying Europe. We will not let Soros be the end. We will not let Soros be the end of Soros. These organizations will be able to get rid of all of them, and I think they will be able to get rid of them. This is a political strategy. Uh, they, uh, with the help of polit political strategies firms, found the perfect enemy who embodies the fears and, and sentiments of many of the of members of the Hungarian public. In 2017, the Hungarian government adopted a new law which is based on a similar Russian foreign agent law. It required NGOs receiving foreign funding to register as such at a ministry website and put a label on their publications. Several affected organizations rejected to comply and initiated an infringement procedure against Hungary at the European Court of Justice. In 2018, the government adopted the so-called Stop Soros Law, punishing foreign-funded NGOs which were helping asylum seekers. Access to justice and due process are fundamental European values and this legislation specifically targets that, saying asylum seekers shouldn't be helped, because if you help asylum seekers, you face the risk of being thrown in jail. In spite of the continuous attacks, social approval of civil society organizations did not disappear, and many people stood up for their cause. However, the attacks had serious negative effects on their daily work. The crackdown on civil society was met with an increasing global resistance from human rights defenders who are now trying to adapt to the new political landscape. There are NGOs or partner organizations in the country who say that uh, we can help them, but we cannot cooperate publicly with state institutions and state authorities the the cooperation completely froze what you could see maybe mainly two uh, types of responses one is to to stand up for yourself soon and to to pick up the struggle and the other is try to to distance yourself and remain neutral there were even examples after the closure of needle exchange programs that a few uh, uh, activists and NGOs try to distribute needles on the street from the backpack mm, but after they uh, uh, were left alone by donors and left alone by local and national government they were not able to continue services. In Eastern Europe and Central Asia most of the non-governmental organizations that provided support for the most vulnerable populations of society were funded by foreign donors. Donor withdrawal and shrinking space of civil society altogether results in the closure of the organizations providing these services. One such example is Kyrgyzstan, where donor withdrawal may not result in transition to domestic funding. We have a tendency in these conditions that after the cessation, the first under this cessation, the organizations from the community. We have a home belonging to our organization, 
на базе этого дома мы реализуем проект по социальному сопровождению. Люди, попадающие к нам, это, наверное, ну, на мой взгляд, самая уязвимая группа. Это люди, вышедшие из мест лишения свободы, имеющие наркозависимость, имеющие статус ВИЧ. Потому что кто освобождается по пробации, на учет ведем мы, на учет ставим мы. Объясняем людям, что надо себя вести вот так, чтобы задержаться, чтобы социализироваться, чтобы научиться жить по новой после таких больших промежутков времени. Никто этим не занимается, потому что, во-первых, у них нет самого такого опыта. То, что человек чувствует в тот момент, они просто-напросто не понимают. Государство не знает проблем, которые тревожат людей, употребляющих наркотики. Люди, которые наркотики употребляют, не могут взаимодействовать напрямую с государством, потому что там разные моменты бывают. И недоверие, и высокомерная оценка, то есть стигма, дискриминация, она все равно присутствует. И мы, получается, связующее звено между государством и потребителями. Если нас убрать, связь вот эта порвется, и от этого уже последствия будут тяжелые. As opposed to the politically neutral position of Kyrgyzstan's authorities with regard to non-governmental organizations, the situation in Russia is completely different. Russian civil society actors are facing physical violence and informal harassment by both state security forces and non-state actors, and the government introduced several laws to silence NGOs. Russia banned certain international donors from the country and introduced the foreign agent law, which suffocates NGOs funded from abroad. This particularly affects NGOs delivering HIV prevention services to key affected populations, such as people who use drugs, sex workers, and men who have sex with men. Although, like we as an organization, we don't consider ourselves as any like politically involved organization, and we don't consider ourselves as being in an opposition to the government. We are just trying to do our activities and like in accordance with our mission to save the lives of people who use drugs, to provide them with access to the needed services for HIV prevention overdose and like to try to make sure that they are being treated with the dignity and like with the respect to their rights. Nevertheless, we have a long history of counteraction with the government. The Andrei Rilko Foundation is the only NGO providing needle and syringe exchange for people who inject drugs in Moscow, a city of 20 million people. In 2012, their website was banned in Russia because they were citing UNAIDS and WHO information on the effectiveness of methadone substitution treatment, which is not allowed in Russia. In 2016, they were put on the foreign agent list, claiming they are conducting foreign-funded political activity by advocating for methadone treatment. It's like a hammer hanging on your, on your head. You never know when it would fall down. So you always feel yourself under control. You always feel that like maybe tomorrow they will find you for some violation of this law. The reaction of the NGO is different. I know that uh, there were cases that some NGO, they decided to close themselves and to stop their activities. And other NGOs, like our, for example, NGO, we are always happy to use the, such opportunity to fight back and to go to the court, because we consider this as a violation of our rights and uh, we don't agree with this definition of uh, foreign agent and we don't consider ourselves as a traitor, but we believe that uh, we work to support the government to stop the epidemic of HIV among people who use drugs in Russia. The Andrei Rilko Foundation won the first case against the fine for not registering as a foreign agent, but they had to fundraise to pay the second fine of $12,000 for their so-called drug propaganda. If they are unable to collect more funds for such future fines, they could be forced to close down. Russia's reluctance to fund any low-threshold HIV prevention services for key affected populations has resulted in the fastest-growing HIV epidemic in the region with 1.2 million registered HIV cases. About 70% of them are those who had the experience of uh, injection drug use. So not doing anything uh, with that is uh, like supporting the escalation of the HIV epidemics, in my opinion. Vulnerable people in Russia are not only subject to state negligence, but are terrorized by non-state actors as well. 
In St. Petersburg, a fascist group not long ago attacked sex workers with unimaginable cruelty. It was horrible, first of all. Even when he was in jail with a cell, I thought that he would come out of this cell. Мы когда, ну вот, когда он нас вывел голыми, ну, с квартиры, мы были все рады, ну, что мы оказались, ну, что на улице, что нам кто-то поможет. Одна соседка кричала, ну, девочки, вам помочь. Я вызвала милицию. Единственный, ну, человек, который что-то как-то откликнулся. А остальные просто, я говорю, там, ну, издевки были. И полиция, значит, мы когда вышли на улицу, два полицейских такие говорят, что происходит? Они видят, что мы голые и не поймут, что, ну, они спрашивают, что происходит. И мы такие говорим, ну, дацик, они развернулись и убежали. Просто развернулись, убежали, заблокировали двери, потому что некоторые девчонки захотели, ну, побежали, чтобы сесть к ним в машину. Они заблокировали двери, то есть, ну, чтобы ну, никто не залез к ним в машину, не сел в машину. И вот, и уехали. Подъехала вторая машина с полицаями. Они такие тоже говорят, типа, что случилось? А, уже Дацик тогда был на улице. Он говорит, ну, ну, типа, проституток веду в полицейский отдел. Они такие, ха-ха-ха, типа, правильно делаешь. И опять же, ну, повторюсь, когда мы были в, поли... ну, в полицейском участке, то есть э, трусы, одежду, еду, опять же, принесли они серебряные розы, то есть адвокатов, опять же, серебряная роза, понимаешь? Если бы не они, то есть как бы, ну... Неизвестно, что бы было дальше. То есть. Я хочу донести, да, что мы тоже люди. И у всех свои проблемы. И мы в этой профессии не от любви к сексу. А потому что нам действительно тяжело. Если бы не серебряная роза, я бы, наверное, ну, я боялась. Нам звонили, нам открыто угрожали. Ну, звонили люди, как они, как они себя называли, сподвиж, сподвижники. Дацика. Вот. Они нам угрожали, что сожгут нас, покалечат детей и т.д. и т.п. Меня поразило безразличие людей. Another example of the severity of shrinking space for civil society is Poland. For the past four years, Poland's rating has been falling in international indexes, monitoring political rights and civil liberties. The Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights, a Warsaw-based watchdog organization, monitors the situation closely and has also been affected by the current policies of the authoritarian government. This government doesn't like women and doesn't like migrants and refugees. Basically, any group prone to marginalization is under greater threat and the greatest risk that they used to be before 2015. Law and Justice, the conservative party which is now ruling in Poland, has targeted migrants, women and also LGBTQ communities. Rządzący dali sygnał, że teraz już wolno mówić bardzo nieprzyjemne rzeczy i nieprzyjazne rzeczy o grupach mniejszościowych w Polsce. Zarówno osoby, jak i instytucje związane z tą branżą po prostu nie mają poczucia bezpieczeństwa, nie mają takiego poczucia, że na przykład w momencie, kiedy nastąpi atak słowny lub fizyczny wręcz na nich, to policja i prokuratura udzieli im stuprocentowego wsparcia w tej sytuacji. Było już, było już kilka tak, niestety takich bardzo nieprzyjemnych sytuacji, w których były, były fizycznie atakowane siedziby organizacji albo działacze organizacji, kiedy na marszach równości pojawiały się agresywne bojówki osób, które nie akceptują odmienności. I reakcja policji najczęściej była, powiedzmy, niezadowalająca. The police seems to be a useful and obedient tool in authoritarian regimes. 
indolent when they need to provide vulnerable communities, the police turns to overacting when authorities want to send a clear message to the organizations hesitant to follow the way marked out by the conservative government. A day after one of the so-called black protests, gathering crowds of women demanding their rights, officers of the charity working to protect and empower women, including victims of domestic violence, experienced unjustifiable police raids. W każdym z naszych oddziałów pojawiła się e, policja. Było to rzeczywiście duże, duże zaskoczenie. Więc ta grupa była imponująca. Ośmiu osób, były klientki fundacji już, więc no, było, było dość nieprzyjemnie. Pokazano nam e, wówczas postanowienie prokuratora o tym, że toczy się postępowanie wobec urzędników ministerstwa związane z niedopełnieniem bądź przekroczeniem uprawnień przy rozliczaniu i e, decydowaniu o dotacjach. No myślę, że rzeczywiście był szok. No to, że było to w obecności klientek, na pewnym momencie musiałyśmy zamknąć rzeczywiście biuro i przeprosić klientki. Był duży taki niepokój z tego względu, że mogło dojść do jakiegoś przecieku, który mógł zaszkodzić naszym klientkom. Jedna z młodych prawniczek, no właściwie kilka dni po tym, poinformowała mnie, że um, rezygnuje z pracy. The Center for Women's Rights, together with a number of other civil society organizations like Political Critique, which is also active in the drug policy field, is on the blacklist of NGOs that can't count on state financial support nowadays and have been cut off from the ministerial grants. This has also heavily influenced the refugee-focused work of the Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights. The only available funds for providing uh, legal and integration aid for migrants staying in Poland was operated by the government at the national level. And those funds were effectively frozen. So in our case, that meant that one third of our budget was cut, which eventually led to a very significant cut uh, in financing. And then many people from, uh, from this department left. Seeing the challenging situation of their colleagues and NGOs advocating for women, refugees or LGBTQ rights, drug policy and harm reduction focused NGOs have been expecting the worst to come. Especially because their areas of focus are perceived as controversial and their work seen by the conservative part of the society as morally dubious. In order to prevent the possible attacks, as well as the broader negative changes in the drug law, the Polish Drug Policy Network decided to hide a bit and resign from some of their advocacy activities. Obawialiśmy się przede wszystkim tego, że nasze działania mogą doprowadzić do zaostrzenia jeszcze bardziej kierunku realizowanej polityki narkotykowej przez nasze państwo, więc w obawie, w obawie przed taką sytuacją wycofaliśmy się z działań właśnie w Sejmie, z działań wakacyjnych w Sejmie, jak i w mediach. Wszystkie wysiłki naszej organizacji zostały nakierowane na zmiany polityki narkotykowej na szczeblu regionalnym, czyli w polskich regionach, miastach, natomiast już nie na szczeblu ogólnopolskim. Pojechaliśmy do 13 regionów i rozmawialiśmy o tym, pracowaliśmy na, na dokumencie deklaracji warszawskiej, by wspólnie stworzyć wytyczne do poprawy e, tych lokalnych, lokalnych strategii. When advocacy work, which addresses the central government, is not an option anymore, organizations shift to closer cooperation with local authorities. This is also a strategy used by Jump93, primarily associate of current and former methadone patient but now also a harm reduction services provider. Ostatnie 3 lata, 4 lata przyniosły zmiany niekorzystne dla, 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 tych, dla tych właśnie organizacji, ale też ostatni rok pokazuje, że, że zaczyna się to, to odwracać. Także ten, ta ucieczka od redukcji szkód, ucieczka od, od różnych takich działań zorientowanych na, 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 na opiekę nad, nad tymi najbardziej poszkodowanymi, na różne inne takie grupy, i jak osoby z podwójną diagnozą. To wszystko zaczyna się zmieniać i za, głównie za sprawą miasta, za sprawą samorządów, które jakby dostrzegają pewną, pewne niebezpieczeństwo w polityce państwa. To, że ubywa, ubywa tego, tego potencjału, aktywnego potencjału. Wydaje mi się, że, że miasta w ogóle chcą się wybić na, na niepodległość na, i powiększyć jakby swoje, swoje kompetencje i to jest Słuszne, tak? 50% rynku usług w zakresie pomocy i leczenia jest w rękach, pozostaje w rękach organizacji konserwatywnych, starych, uznanych organizacji konserwatywnych. 
Natomiast kłopot jest z tymi wszystkimi młodymi, mniejszymi organizacjami, które próbują prowadzić różnego rodzaju innowacje. Tak? I, to jest, I one są y, często kontrowersyjne, często nie, 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 nie mają zrozumienia wśród, wśród decydentów, urzędników i, i, i tu robi się kłopot. In that context of deepening, deepening polarization, we also see the rise of new kind of uh, NGOs, um, far right, or groups very closely working, which very closely works, work with the governing majority. And uh, this is something different from what we've observed in, in Hungary, when in Hungary NGOs are presented as scapegoats. While in Poland, the government, um, government has different strategy. Instead of attacking very particular organization, they decide to promote those who work closely with them. The current situation is forcing civil society organizations not only to think about their safety, but also about new ways of continuing their work towards their mission. They also have to reshape their fundraising strategies immediately to be able to sustain their activities. Rzeczywiście te organizacje równościowe bardzo się utożsamiają ze swoją misją i misja jest dla nich priorytetem. Nie przetrwanie finansowe czy jakiś rozwój wielkiej działalności, tylko właśnie wierność swojej misji. Duża zmiana jest taka, że, że te organizacje bardzo zaczęły myśleć o fundraisingu od osób indywidualnych. I to jest to, coś, co się zmieniło. I to jest to, to, też to, co się zmieniło w naszym podejściu w ostatnich kilku latach, że my w rozmowie z organizacjami bardzo ich zachęcamy, żeby żeby oni wykorzystywali te dotacje nie na takie tylko bieżące utrzymanie, ale żeby właśnie myśleli o przyszłości, myśleli o tym, żeby tworzyć jakieś zręby swojego własnego niezależnego finansowania, niezależnego od instytucji publicznych. I rzeczywiście wiele z tych organizacji dobrze sobie z tym radzi. Część jeszcze uzupełnia to na przykład działalnością gospodarczą, część próbuje działalności odpłatnej, ale, ale dla większości z nich chyba takim najważniejszym kierunkiem to jest teraz zwracanie się do darczyńców indywidualnych. We are very proud to still have our international donors supporting us and I would make it very clear that without this uh, help, this support, we wouldn't have made it for the last four years. But I'm aware that there are organizations in Poland, smaller organizations, who cannot say the same. Europa! Europa! Civil society organizations in Europe still hope that the European Union can provide some sort of protection against their own authoritarian governments. There is discussion about uh, making um, European Union funding dependent on um, respecting the rule of law and other European core values, but also on the European Union spending money on protecting these values within its border, not just outside of its border. After 25 years of struggle for human rights protection, you might have thought that uh, you achieved certain level and you secured the basis and you can build on that. But in 2015, we discovered that there is no such a thing as secured uh, basic understanding of the importance of the rule of law and democratic values. And it was for many people in the foundation, especially those who remember working in the communist period, that was like a sort of deja vu that we, how many times do we have to fight for the very same thing? Václav Havel, the great dissident from the Czech Republic, uh, once said that a totalitarian system can coexist with private ownership, sometimes even with private enterprise and parliamentarian system, but it can never coexist with a vibrant civil society. So vibrant civil society, what really makes a difference between an authoritarian and a free society. <laughs>